Hello, my name is Julie and I am from the East Baton Rouge Parish Library. I work at the Central Branch and today I'm going to show you how to make this little bitty cool watermelon uh, earbud wrap. So you can wrap your cords around here and keep it nice and handy and don't get them tangled in your backpack and things like that. So first I'm going to show you the supplies that you will need. So in your kit, when you pick them up at uh, the Central Branch Library, remember supplies are limited, so come pick them up. Uh, you will have a template like this. You will have a piece of green felt, just like this, a piece of pink felt, a small little piece of stick-on Velcro, and then coordinating thread in both your green and your pink and a needle and your needle should be stuck right along there with the thread. Now what you will have to provide at home will be a pair of scissors, a sharpie, most likely this one will do you just fine. I have the fine point one just in case. Um, and if you have a hole punch, it will be handy, but it's not necessary and I'll show you why later on. All right, so to start out, we are gonna first start out by cutting out the template right here. So one of the things you wanna do is on this one with the three blue circles, don't cut out the circles. We'll deal with that later. And voila, we have them cut and we will grab then our felt. So the easy one is going to be this pink one right here. It's gonna just fit in that edge, fit in that little space that I gave you. So you're gonna go probably to the edge. So I'm gonna line up that long line with that edge to make it easier. So you're gonna cut two of the green ones and you're gonna use these edges here too and you're gonna go all the way to the end because it is gonna be a little tight fit on your little green pieces. So. And then we're going to cut them out. All right, so when you're done, you have your pieces, your two green pieces and the pink piece. So you do wanna to check to make sure your green pieces line up fairly well. So here's where we're gonna hide that little black line on the edge. Find out the sides that have that and place them in towards each other and that's how you're gonna line them up. So as you can see, it's not lining up exactly. You can turn it both ways and we're gonna come back to it. But I think that's fairly well. I'm not gonna trim it now. Okay, so, and the same thing with this. So see the black edge on this pink. We definitely don't want that showing. The green, you probably won't see it as much. But this is my good side for the green, and this is my bad side for the pink. So I'm going to turn that little bad side with the outline on it down, and I'm going to put it, I'm going to put it here because I have that little bit of a better curve here, close to the edge. And you can check and see if you fold it together, it should come right to that edge right there. And it does. So I'm going to put this one aside for right now. So you're going to grab your needle. Don't stick yourself like I just did. So I'm going to show you how to stitch this and I'm going to give you a little piece of advice. If your grandma, your mom, your aunt, brother, sister, dad comes in and says, oh, I know how to sew and I can do it better than that. You might want to listen to them. I'm not great at sewing, but this will work. So thread your needle, and I'm gonna show you a little trick for that. I'm gonna cut a little piece of scrap paper. All right, and I'm gonna look at the space on the eye of my needle, and this is too wide, so I'm gonna cut it down a little more. I want it pretty thin. 
So I'm going to take my pink thread and I am going to fold that little slip of paper around the thread. And hopefully this will work, although I think I might have to take it down a little more. I don't know, I think I might have gotten it. Okay, so and then I stick the paper through the needle and it should, there you go, pull that thread through the needle and then you can just throw that not, threader to the side and I have the pink thread threaded. So one of the first things I'm going to do is tie a knot on the end. I kind of wrap it around my finger, just kind of like that first step when you tie your shoe and pull it like that. And be careful, like I try to leave it towards the end a little bit so I kind of work it that way. It doesn't have to be exactly on the end or on the edge. Um, you can also, as you can see with this thread, if you find it to be a little too thick, you can separate it out a little bit, but I'm using the full thing and that knot should hold. So the first stitch will be telling, we'll know if it holds or not. If this knot isn't big enough, I would just tie another one on top of it and kind of work it so it's on top of it. So it gives you a little thicker knot. And another little trick, if you pull, you want to have, you know, a piece, the, the shorter piece here, if you pull it a little further a little bit, you don't have to pull your thread way far out, but you got to watch it so you're not double having a double thread going towards your stitch here. All right, so here we go. So for the first stitch, I'm going to have you start at the bottom here and you're going to have to kind of eyeball it. So hold this in place, turn it over, and I'm going to start in this little corner here. So I'm coming up from the back and the reason I'm doing that is we want to hide that stitch. All right, so you're just going to sew all the way around. Okay, so I wanted to come in and show you this real quick. So I need to give myself a little more room here. I just put, tug on that a little bit and it gives me a much more bit of thread here that's just one level because you don't want to stitch with this. You want to kind of, this should be your leftovers, that little tail in there. Okay, I'm right about the last few stitches here. So I came up for this last one. So you want to end it by going back through to your side with the stitches that isn't going to be seen. So where your knot is, that's where you want to put the knot for this one. So you have your nice little stitched side right there. And actually, if you keep it threaded, you can kind of go make that same little knot go around your finger. And I use that needle, be careful. Needles are sharp and pull it through. And again, you can kind of play with this thread to get the knot a little closer in. Tighten it up there. And then I'm gonna just trim that off pretty close to that knot. And I'm gonna, while I'm here with the scissors, I'm gonna trim this down a little bit too. So it's just so it's not so bulky, but I have my knots right there. All right, so for the next step, remember this is the side that has a little bit of that black edge where you can kind of see it. So that I'm gonna turn down to the inside like that. All right, so if you can see, if you're a perfectionist that, look, it's sticking out just a tiny bit there, and if I flip it over, it's sticking out a tiny bit there. Don't worry, a little bit of variation, you won't know because this didn't line up perfectly and I could, you can't tell. You can't tell at all. So don't worry about that. Okay, so for this thing, you're pr or this step, you're going to do the same with the green thread. You're going to thread the needle, tie a knot in the end of the string, 
and I'll show you how to start stitching it in. All right, so we have our needle threaded with the green and I have the knot tied in it. So this is where it really does come in handy to take this short piece and pull it so it's not quite so short. So you're not having to pull so far out. All right, so this is pretty much, you're gonna kinda do the same thing, but you're only going through the green. It's a little easier because you're not having to go blindly from the back, um, but we are gonna start on the back. So let's see. So it's not too bulky, my knots are there. I'm gonna start here then. All right, so I'm gonna start from the back. You can really start anywhere you want. I'm just gonna go, you, you need to be a little bit, I fourth, probably less than a fourth of, inch, of an inch away from the edge there. So my knot is there, it's holding, we're good. Okay, so for this last little stitch, we kind we want to hide our um, our knot again as well, which isn't quite as easy here because we got it coming from the front. So what I'm going to do is just let's see, I'm going to do that one last stitch actually. Come up like that. All right, and here I'm just going to go back into the side of it, it won't make too much of a difference. All right, so the next step, you can put your needle in a place where it won't fall or get stepped on. I'm going to stick it back on the card. I'm not going to worry about it being threaded. It's yours to keep if you want to make another one later on if this one wears out because it's felt, it will. So before we put on the Velcro, I want you get the opportunity to draw your little seeds on here, your little watermelon seeds like this one. And the easier way to do it is to do it before the Velcro so that you can lay it flat. So the reason I have these little holes right here is for this. You and it's your little pattern. So it's helpful for you to have them evenly spaced. So I'm gonna grab the Sharpie marker, lay my pattern on top of the pink part, and I am just going to fill that in. So you have a little black dot, and yeah, I know a black dot is in a seed. But that's okay, it gets it evenly spaced on your little watermelon here. So I'm just gonna kind of bring it down to make a little tear dot drops shape for that upper one. But if you do want to add another couple of seeds in there, you can. I like the three. So the final step right here is the Velcro. I'm going to peel, peel off the back ring of either piece, whichever one's easiest to come up first. And I'm going to put it right there at the top of the oval. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just give it a little press. Make Go ahead, peel that off. Okay, so you peeled that other sheet, other piece of the Velcro off, and then you want to peel the backing. All right, and so you're gonna kind of line it up like that. And it's a big enough piece that it doesn't have to line up perfectly, but it'll catch. Yeah, so those will catch. All right, and there you have it. You have your little watermelon.